Hey, hello everybody. I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. You know what I'm going to say. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer, hopefully it's going to be a big treat. Uh, Rico sent us to me, and I'm probably going to butcher this all to hell, guys, because I'm not from Norway, and that's where this beer is from. Uh, it says Dramen, Norway. And this is Han Bregeret, Bregeret, H-A-A-N-D B-Y B-R-Y-G-G-E-R-I-E-T What a mouthful that word is. Odin's Temple. And what that is is an Imperial Stout. Uh, big beer coming in at 11% on this one. And on the back where they used to have a date code on the back of them on this particular bottle it's got Batch 349. I have no idea what year that is or what that's about. But 11% uh, Imperial Stout not critical, but uh, you could probably go to the website if they have one and find out when they did batch 349, which I am not going to do. I think it should be written on the label. should have the vintage there instead of batch 349. What the hell is the good of telling us it's batch 349? Who gives a rat's ass? Tell us. <laughs> we did this in 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. That's going to mean more to us than batch 349. I don't get these people sometimes, the breweries, it amazes me that they think they can just put your batch number. Whose benefit is that? Theirs? Yes. Ours? No. Alright, the note I got from Rico says, uh, Hamburger at uh, Odin's Temple, Dark Norse Ale. Russian Imperial Stout, Norwegian Brewery, no vintage date, picked up for $9. So, Rico paid 9 bucks for this beer. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate it, Rico, for spending your hard-earned cash and shipping me this beer. I don't buy a lot of imported beers because uh, they are very, very pricey. Um, this is a little bit bigger bottle than a standard 12 ounce bottle. It's probably a 500 milliliter. Uh, I don't even see it. And the it's imported by the Shelter Brothers. They import a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. So uh, I don't see the bottle size written on here. And it says here, Odin, the chief god of Norse mythology, was a forceful but complicated being of many moods, a symbol of battle, victory, and death, but also of wisdom, poetry, and prophecy. With his hearty, complex ale, the hand brewers imagine Odin in later years when his victories on the battlefield were but shadowy memories. His reflection tended toward loftier themes such as life's meanings. And his drink would have been a deep, dark, and contemplative one. So, there's a commercial description we're going to give you. Uh, food pairings for this style of beer, guys. Uh, I don't think I've got IBUs listed here. It does not have it on Rape Beer. It does not have it on Beer Advocate. And Untap says no IBUs. So, we don't know. Okay, food pairings, like I said, for this one. It's a stout, so it goes well with your chocolate dish, of course. Black Shredder Pine, Be Becker and Nonic Tumbler Snifter. Got my favorite snifter, and can be sellable for long periods of time. So, let's not sell it any longer. Let's get it out. Let's whip it out. Looks good out, yeah. And it's filled all the way up to the top, so they give you your money's worth. Very nice artwork on the front. A nice picture of Odin, and, and looks like his mug of whatever. <laughs> 
Ooh, pitch black coming out of here, guys. Looks like Motorola. Let's stand it up. It is not going to pour ahead, guys. And we'll leave a little bit in there. No head. 11%, no head. Over to the light. No light. Fish black, guys. Absolutely black. And then, I can't recall a beer had poured absolutely no freaking head. It's poured none. Zero, nada, zilch, zip, none. Let's get a nose on it. Rich roasted malt. Maybe some slight hints of some dark fruit. And a little bit of alcohol. That's all I'm getting on the nose, guys. And from what I've read and seen, this gets a good rating, so. You're gonna fool me by looking at it. This time, let's get it on. Cheers. Cheers, Rico. It's a fooler. That's got a really good taste. Rich roasted malt, caramel, topping. Raisins, plums, figs, slight hints of some bittersweet chocolate in there. Maybe a little bit of coffee in there too. Very sweet on the back end. Not bitter at all. Values are very low in this, I would think. I'm just not getting anything on the nose hardly. Almost looks like it's uncarbonated, it's so flat looking. But it's got a pretty good taste. Heavily roasted malt, almost to the burnt characteristics there. But there is a little alcohol taste to it, I will say that. So maybe batch 349 is fairly recent. Especially since it didn't pour any head at all. None. Maybe it, would, maybe it needs to cellar in a 70 degree closet for a little while. Maybe let the yeast work a little bit more in there. Maybe carbonate it a little bit more. Let it get more complex. But it's decent. Pretty tasty. Well, let's let it come up to room temperature. Let her have a sip two or three. And we'll see where she ends up. I'll be right back. Hi right, guys, I've been sipping on this probably about 30 minutes or so. Very tasty. It is a very tasty beer. Uh, not much aromas on the nose, not much carbonation. I think it's a little undercarbonated, to be honest about it. And as far as dating, uh, instead of having a vintage on it, so we know if it's 2013, 15, 16, or whatever, they put a silly ass batch number, which is uh, irrelevant to people that's buying the beer. So, they have the capability of putting a date code on there and they choose to put a batch number on there, so. I'm not a big fan of that. They need to put the date. Month and year would be great. Month and year would be even be would it be better or just as good. Or just a vintage of the year would be something, but a batch number? Nah. Might as well put Go yourself. So, as Donald, as Donald Trump would say, <laughs> according to all the damn commercials I'm seeing on my TV right now. But very tasty beer, very well made beer, a little on the boozy side. But if it's a fresh batch, that would explain that. And if we knew, if it was a fresh batch, I could tell you that. So we cannot. So, final shot. Big sweetness on the back end, very much like a barley wine or a milk stout. Slight booziness. Nice roasted, almost to the burnt, characteristics of the malt. Little hints of some coffee, not a lot. Bittersweet chocolate and hints of dark fruit, raisins, plums, dates. 
Very nice. I do think it's a little undercarbonated though. But I wish I would, the biggest complaint is batch numbers of a date or a vintage. So, with that being said, guys, uh, I'm probably going to go against the grain on this one. It's a very tasty beer, but we need a little more information other than a batch number. Vintage would be very helpful, and any more information than that would be even better, month, day, whatever. So, uh, for me, guys, even though it's a very tasty beer, I think it's an undercarbonated beer, and we need more information on the label than they're giving us. So, I'm going to give this the 8, which is an A minus. If I was spending a new American rating on this, it would probably be a 90. Uh, it is a tasty beer, but information on the label leaves a little bit to be desired. So, I'm going to leave it at that. We'll go over to uh, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 94, outstanding. I think that's a better number than I would give it uh, with the information I have on the label. And over to Ray Beer, they say 99 overall, 92 in the style. A lot better number than I would give it with the information I have on the style. So, uh, I'm giving it a 90, guys. Uh, I do appreciate Rico spending his hard-earned money for this beer. Uh, and these imported beers are not cheap. That's why I don't buy a whole lot of them. Uh, I think we can get just as good uh, on the American scene. And a lot of times we get a little more information than what we get from the imported beers, even though if they was to sell this in Norway, I think they would have to put a little more information on it than other than a batch number from what I've heard and read. But when they export them, they don't have to put a lot of stuff on them. That's just the laws that we have in this country. So, so be it. Uh, we will go over and check with uh, Untapped while we're here. And they say 3.5A. I'm more in line with that. That's down in the B category as far as I'm concerned. So I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt by giving them a 90 in the A category. I just assume give them a 7 for depending a batch number on it and being under carbonated. Uh, but I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because my brother and friend and craft beer, Rico, spent his hard on money on that. I did think it was a tasty beer, even though slightly boozy. Slightly. Not much. It's 11%, so you got to realize it's going to be a little bit boozy. So, uh, very nice. I don't know if I would buy this beer if it was available here, and it may be, because I haven't been over to the, the, uh, the imported section in quite a while. So, uh, thanks again, Rico. I do appreciate it, sir. Uh, I'm sure this was a fresh bottle that was on the shelf that you could pick up, and it wouldn't really matter if they're putting a batch number on it instead of a date. So, uh, that's where we're going to leave it. If you've had this one from, and I'm butchering this up all to hell, probably, guys, the Ham Braggeret or Braggeret. Odin's Temple, and they're out of Norway. Kind of tasty. Just need a little more information. If you've had it, let me know what you think, guys. Come on back tomorrow. We'll dig something out of the fridge. We'll come back tomorrow. Let's see what it is. See you then.